Hi, and welcome to another video for Friday the 13th, The Game. Today we will be following our favorite serial killer as he eliminates the handful of counselors intruding on his land. The setting will be Higgins Haven, and our Jason will be from Part 4, the final chapter. This walkthrough is designed as a step-by-step -step guide to help you play better as Jason Voorhees, and effectively dispatch with your troublesome opposition. Playing as Jason can be a lot of fun, but it can also be very frustrating. By taking the time to make a few preparations, and by keeping a level head, you can make the experience of the match enjoyable instead of an annoyance. Right then, let's get started. Right, let's go to Higgins Haven and follow Jason as he hacks his way through the counselors on behalf of his dead mother. On spawning into the shack, collect the throwing knives that have been left for you as your mother gives you instruction. Locate the phone icon on your map and immediately morph to the cabin. Place a bear trap in front of the fuse box, collect the knife and prepare the cabin for your impending encounter with the counselors as they try to put the phone back into operation. Smash the windows and take out the doors so that you can gain easy access to the cabin on your return. Always go to the cabin with the phone fuse box first. Counselors such as Deborah and Eric can repair the line very quickly and often work in pairs with another player manning the phone to ensure that the repair is done as swiftly as possible. More often than not, you will find a counselor to be in close proximity to the cabin on your arrival. And as you can see, Deborah is fleeing from the scene to find safety indoors. Normally, I would allow her to escape in order to finish with my trap placements. But as she is so adept at repair, I will take her out to limit the team's chances of calling the police so early in the game. I can see Deborah through the window, and this early in the game, she won't have attained many items, so it's unlikely that she has acquired a pocket knife. I'll get hold of her and attempt a finishing move. Sometimes you'll be prompted to use an environmental kill, which allows you to dispatch with your rival quickly using an item within your immediate surroundings, and in this case it's a screwdriver, and we'll put a swift end to Debbie's game. One less counselor to worry about. It is now time to finish setting our traps, so we'll check the map and morph to the next location. There are two cars on this map. Pick one and go straight to it. It's the two-seater and the hood is open. Place a trap in front of the car to prevent repair or on the driver's side door to deter access. I see that there is a knife nearby. We'll retrieve this as I wait for my morph ability to return. Morph to the last vehicle and place your final trap. Never put a trap in front of the gas tank. If your rivals have already filled the tank, your trap will simply go to waste. I'll then run over to the nearest cabin and chop the door down. Should a counselor be attempting to repair this vehicle and get wind of my return, they will immediately run to the nearest cabin to escape. With no door on the cabin, it will be easy to apprehend them. Whether you play as Jason or as one of the counselors, it pays to take note of the list of characters before the game even starts. If the team consists of players such as Vanessa, Brandon and Tiffany, you may wish to alter your selection to aid the team with repair as these characters will not be suited for such tasks. 
Likewise, should you become Jason and note that there are but one or two players capable of fast repair, if you come across them, take them out. Chances are that the remaining players won't be able to complete their tasks before you can get to them. With all traps set, it is now time to find the remaining counsellors. The main house is always a good place to start. Your rivals are desperate to find useful items to aid their escape and survival, and the lodge has plenty of drawers for a player to search. It is also advantageous to put the electrical boxes out of commission. Plunging an area into darkness will up the level of fear a counsellor experiences. Some counsellors produce very low levels of noise, but emit much more when scared, so this will help you pinpoint these furtive players. Ah, a glowing cabin with a single door. Not many windows or means for a player to escape. Smash the window and prepare to enter. It's Brandon, and he's set a trap of his own. He'll have taken some damage from climbing through the broken window, and will give chase once we are free. Your shift ability allows you to travel over distractions such as firecrackers and enables you to close the gap between a fast-moving target such as Brandon. Oh, and there are two of them. We'll get closer to identify our unidentified fugitive. It's Kenny. His repair ability is better than Brandon's, and his speed and stamina are not the best. He looks fatigued, so we'll forget Brandon for now and kill Kenny instead. He stunned us, but we'll close the gap with our shift ability. Despite losing sight of him, I won't let him go. We'll highlight his position and chase after him to wear him out. He stunned us again, but we won't give up. We'll continue to hunt him until we've got hold of him and taken him down. Persistence is the key. There are only so many knives or stunning blows a counsellor can make, and you will have the last laugh. Goodbye, Kenny. Another one bites the dust, and one less counsellor with the ability to make a repair. Right, where to next? Let's check the map. We'll use our sensibility first. I'll bet that's Brandon. And it looks like he's going over the bridge. Time to meet him on the other side. We'll use our stock to try and catch him unaware, and we'll throw a knife to try and slow him down. Three counsellors, and one is trying to fit the battery. We'll have him first. He may have used a pocket knife to disarm the trap we placed in front of the car. This prevents Jason from knowing someone is making an attempt to repair something, but also means that the counsellor is no longer armed with a pocket knife in his inventory. And sure enough, he doesn't. I'll use one of my quicker kill actions so I can get straight after the others. There, good night, Brandon. Yeah. 
They're together and behind the cabin. One of them is Tommy Jarvis. Tommy enters the game when a counselor uses a CB radio and calls for help. A player is then picked at random to return as the hero after dying or escaping the camp. He's injured and will try to use his medispray. I'll slash him so he can't get away or use his knife on me. And here comes Brandon to the rescue. And it looks as though he plans to square up to me. Stupid. Very stupid. Tommy won't get far, so I'll savor the moment. Now to get Tommy, and I'll use my sense to find him. He's at the front of the house. He must be seriously injured. One more slash should do it. All counselors dead, mother will be happy. And there you have it. The camp is clear of intruders, and Jason goes back to his shack, a happy little slasher. I hope you found this video to be both entertaining and informative. Until the next time, take care and have a good day.